Uh, the first time that it began to be a question was 1960, when I did the explosions in California. And the reason that it is a constant conversation was that I was even mistaken about what I was doing. I thought I was doing something about specific holes made by the explosions. And in fact, it was the general idea of the explosion that was what was interesting, far more than each individual hole. So it took all those years putting it together and doing other things to bring it to another point. And I had to decide that I could no longer use a medium that I happen to like a lot, which is painting and sculpture, because it was not fulfilling my needs. So I had to develop a way to present the work I was doing. That was it. It's not very radical. I think everybody, even when you, you're cooking, has to, to, to bring it about that people can understand that they can't come with expectations. Museums are not really public space. Galleries are public space. You don't have to pay to go in. Nobody looks in your bag. <laughs> you go in, you look at the work, and you use it or you don't. So that's public. On the street is public. But don't forget, and this is very important, artists are part of the public. Artists take their kids to the dentist. They pay their taxes. They, it is public artists for them as well. They are members of the society. It's not the public and art. All art is essentially public. So if it's on a wall and it's been invited on a wall, that's the end of the conversation. People are convinced that there is something there. Now, I make art and I'm not convinced that there's something there until I present it and until people see if they can use what I have to present to understand their lives better. Because that's what art's about. It's a paradigmatic drawing. It tells you a little story of the drawing that you figure out yourself. And in fact, it's about a geyser. It's about this strange thing. And it came about just in a comfortable conversation uh, of what is philosophy and what are we talking about. And it's things that push enough pressure that something comes out. And it's popping a pimple is an idea. It's the like eureka. It was just a simple phrase. But in fact, it's quite true. What if we looked at KUB, not in terms of titanic plates, the plates underneath that move things that make the earthquakes, but at Teutonic plates, because there are four or five kinds of Germanic culture going on right here. Literally four or five completely distinct Germanic cultures. So that's titanic plates crashing against each other. And that's, for me, what interested me about doing a show in Bregenz. The work, the sculpture, is the material referred to and language. So if it's about a stone, it's about stone. And that's the material. And that's what you see when you see a sculpture. You look at it and there's the stone and you, you translate it into stone. The scale doesn't matter, it's, its size doesn't matter, its color doesn't matter, it's totally you know, adapted to the situation and uh, it rises to the occasion. One hopes, water does find its own level.
light is very important as a material. Okay, yes. And stone. And what do you use the stones for? You use the stones to block the light. That you can have whatever you like. It's the point is, is I'm building the structure and you're trying to figure out how to survive as you within my structure. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you see, work sometimes is like human beings. They have to find their place. So you show them somewhere and it doesn't have any response. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. You put it somewhere else and there's a chance if it's interesting that it'll have a response and that's where it belongs. And as I said, you must remember, art is made by people for other people. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, I want them to, to come in and I want them to walk into the Kunsthaus right here when this is finished. This will have another kind of a feel to it. And I want them to become so empowered that while they're going through the exhibition, they become enriched and they walk out on the street and then they become good people and live a nice life. It ain't gonna happen, but that's what I'd like. You asked me why I make art. That's why I make art, okay? <laughs> Thank you.